What you have happening right here in Decatur, Alabama is special. It's unique. Do not measure your success based on your attendance or your offering or what may or may not be transpiring in your community because we are in the early days of a slow turn. Okay? And you are never in the new covenant to measure yourself by the metrics of the old system. You are carrying a new wine, but you are not carrying it in an old wineskin. Right. If you want to carry it in an old wineskin, then you can use the metrics of old wineskin churches. And you can determine whether you're successful based upon attendance and offerings and numbers. Or you can carry a new wine, which doesn't know the legal limits of law, but knows the life, the endless life of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And in that... There's a whole new metric by which you measure, and that metric has nothing to do with attendance boards and money and has everything to do with liberty and release. Are people free, and have they been released from bondage into the glorious liberty of sons? And so let that be the metric by which you determine your success. And if you will just pull grave clothes off of people, let them be released into that liberty of sonship. It would be a beautiful thing. I think what's happening in the world today where we are seeing pushbacks against ideologies. You turn your news on and you watch protesters holding signs. You watch people fighting on one side of the aisle and the other side of the aisle ideologically. And if you take it through the metrics of your immediate context, you're going to say, oh my goodness, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. But if you take it in the broader context, you ought to celebrate because you live in a world where people can disagree and they don't kill each other. And you didn't live in that world 200 years ago. You barely lived in that world 100 years ago, and there were pockets of it 50 years ago where you didn't live in that world. And you're increasingly living in a world where man has expanded his ability to appreciate the difference in his neighbor. Why are you starting a sermon off with this? Because if grace is going to win the war for man's soul, and I believe it will, we're going to have to do it better than they did it a half a millennium ago when Martin Luther stuck his 94 thesis on the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany, basically telling the Catholic church, here are 94 things you're doing wrong, and we're going to get them right according to grace. And both sides picked up swords and killed the other one on ideological grounds. We have to grow past that. We've had 500 years to grow past that. And I thank God we are growing past that. Amen. That you're going to be able to see someone who completely disagrees with you, and you're not going to think they need to die. You're going to see someone who completely disagrees with your theology and you're not going to condemn them to hell. You're just going to realize that in a society of people who are growing in the grace and the knowledge of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's okay if not everybody lines up with your theology. You'll love them anyway. You'll accept them anyway. You'll even worship next to them. You'll amen next to them. We won't have to line up ideologically because we'll start to line up spiritually eventually. Let it happen, even if it happens slowly. You live in a beautiful time. You live in a moment where the church is in a turn. It's a slow turn. we got a long, long way to go. And I, maybe the littlest ones among us, the youngest ones among us, will see it come to fruition. But we're going to have battle lines drawn in the sand, but we're not going to fight across those lines. We're going to exchange ideas across those lines. Those battle lines are going to be the difference in what people see about the Bible that they think is about them and what people see about the Bible that they know is about Jesus. And that clash is eventually going to bring us together to realize that this book was not written to you that this book was not written about you this book was written for you but it was about a man named Jesus and the faster you open its pages and realize that whatever he has done a lot of it's in the context of his time to his people but it's been done on your behalf and the quicker we can differentiate between the two the more at peace we will be and that's the day I long for in the church and that's why I'm traveling the world trying to pull grave clothes off of people because I can't transform one person. I can't raise you spiritually from the dead. But whenever you come waddling out of your grave full of grave clothes of condemnation and guilt, religion, and performance, I might be able to grab one of those grave clothes and yank just a little bit so that by the time I get on a plane and leave, you've got a little piece of you that might be a little freer than it was before the sermon started. That's my goal. That's pastor's goal when you walk through this door every week. When we change that metric and go, no, my goal is to see if I can get one more family. My goal is to see if I can get a hundred more dollars. Then we've already lost the purpose of what it means to release Lazarus and let him go. Aren't you glad you're in a place that cares more about your freedom than it does your wallet? Amen. Aren't you glad you're in a place that cares more about your liberty than it does your attendance? Amen. Yes, your liberty, then your attendance. May that become the mantra of who we are in Christ.
that I'd rather you be free than here. 